Nation's weekly report. I'm Viviana Granillo, and on this week's show, we have your latest trending headlines, a segment with Lindita in her kitchen, La Vida Social with Shelly Aragon, The V Spot, and HBTV Sports with Alex Ramirez. How about we get HBTV started because the weekly report starts now. All right, guys, beginning with your trending headlines, Gina Rodriguez is an inspiration to all of us. The star of the fantastic Golden Globe winning show, Jane the Virgin, is preparing to release her first book titled, I Can't and I Will, Tools My Daddy Gave Me. And it's literally based on all the inspirations, motivations, and positive and good vibes her father gave her throughout the years. Rodriguez is very moved to share her good vibes with the world in this book. Quote, if you can teach, move, stretch, inspire, encourage, and motivate others by telling your stories, why wouldn't you? I Can and I Will will set to be released in 2016. The world can't wait to read it, and I am very excited to see how this book will skyrocket this Puerto Rican's beauty's career. Speaking of inspirational, this past week, a 13-year-old mariachi singer, Alondra Santos, wows the judges on America's Got Talent with La Charriada. She sang the song beautifully, and she admits that she only sings at home because she is a little shy. Check out a part of her debut and you tell me whether she is shy or not. Wow, what an incredible voice from this little girl. My favorite part was at the end when she broke down in tears of joy as she saw a standing ovation from her audience. You can now imagine the doors that have opened up for this little girl. All the luck to Alondra Santos because we want to see a whole lot more from her. In crazy news, Taco Bell will now add booze to its menu. That's right, Taco Bell will be offering alcoholic beverages at its restaurants in the USA. Like in Spain and Japan, this is really not a big deal, but it is the first to hit the US. The first location to trial run this new approach of these alcoholic beverages this coming summer will be in Wicker Park in Chicago. Included in these drinks will be a variety of beers, wine, and mixed alcohol freezes. Taco Bell is aiming to appeal to the new millennials, and you can now imagine what the new trend will be. Would you like a strawberry margarita with that V burrito, ma'am? Well, I want to know what you think about this. Are you for it or are you against it? Send me a message at HBTV Weekly Report. Hi everyone, it's Shelly Aragon, and thanks for joining me for this edition of La Vida Social. Last week, we touched base on how to create a Facebook page, which may have seemed a little elementary to a lot of us, but you'd be surprised at how many established small businesses aren't quite in the social media loop just yet. And for those business owners, it may be a little more difficult to transition into branding your business through social media. But do not fret, my friends. We are here to help you with a few pointers. And regardless of if you're new to social media or a pioneer, there are a few universal guidelines. This week, we'll talk about some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to posting on behalf of your small business. Let's start with the do's, shall we? First thing to keep in mind is you want your social media profile completed in full. No one likes to get to a Facebook page or Twitter page only to find out they haven't taken the time to upload a photo to their account. Photos are a good start, as well as having a name that is easily identified as being you and your business. And definitely take that extra five minutes to fill out the about you information. First impressions are important and lasting. Secondly, remember that old saying, you are what you eat? Nowadays, it's more like you are what you share and tweet. <laughs> so just use good common sense here. The internet is now becoming the track record of your life. Don't share something you don't want to be left as a representation of you or your business. But also, don't let this stop you from making yourself known on issues and topics that matter. Having no voice pertaining to certain issues could be worse than a few people disagreeing with you. And besides, you can't please all of the people all of the time anyway, right? Moving along to the don'ts. 
don't be needy, as in don't ask your Twitter followers to please retweet this tweet, and don't beg your Facebook friends to come like your page. You can still accomplish this task in a more discreet way. Make them feel like they can't afford to not be a part of your page. And please, 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 please do not badmouth your competition. One, it's tasteless, that simple. On the other hand, following social media accounts of your competitors can be a good way to get some valuable insights on the competition. Playing nice with competing brands on social media goes a long way. Not only can it help you establish a professional working relationship with others in your field, but it also improves your online reputation in the eyes of your own followers as well as your competitors. And lastly, we can't forget about the importance of proper grammar and spelling. If you're anything like me, spelling might not be your thing. So when in doubt, just look it up. <laughs> and there you have it, a few do's and don'ts of social media etiquette. Thanks for watching this edition of La Vida Social. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram and like us on Facebook. And friends, this week, I'll leave you with this. Social media started as a way to keep in touch with family and friends. And isn't it so cool we can contact anyone around the world at any time with just a few keystrokes? We share elements of our life from what we enjoy to photos of ourselves and those in our lives. It's like being a part of that person's world, even though you're miles apart. But just remember, there's a time and a place for everything, and this includes updating your status. So next time you're at a restaurant with family or friends, try putting the phone away. Because what could possibly be more important than enjoying the company you're with? Namaste. Thank you very much, Shelly. What I'm going to be doing with my family this weekend, and if you haven't seen it yet, you are missing out. Jurassic World makes U.S. box office history this past weekend. The film earned a total of $516 million worldwide, the largest ever box office for an international release. The film opened in 4,273 theaters around the country and received a total of 48% of the income by showcasing in 3D and IMAX. This fourth film in the dinosaur saga created by Steven Spielberg is said to be intense, dramatic, and with a lot of action. So if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you go out and check it out this week. On the political scene, two more GOP presidential hopefuls throw their hat into the 2016 presidential race. Jeb Bush, no stranger to how the process works as both his brother George W. Bush and father George H. W. Bush both found winning formulas for victory. Also jumping in the race is none other than Donald Trump, real estate mogul and reality TV host. Well, there's really nothing much else to say about that. When we come back, we got a segment of The V-Spot and HBTV Sports with Alex Ramirez. Don't go anywhere. Entrepreneur. 
You know, it's taking time to grow. When you first start, it's not busy. You keep working at it and working at it. I've been doing this a long time, over 20 years now. And you keep working at it, you can make it happen. Yes, you can. More power to you, my man. All right, guys. We're going to have a chance to get to know more of who DJ Mr. Groove is. We have a whole minute to ask you a variety of questions. Are you ready? Let's go. Are you ready to put on the beats, Pots? Um, I'm going to do it. Right. We got to do it. All right. And the time starts do, 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 right now. DJ Mr. Groove, what is your phone name? Damien Rodriguez. What's your DJ name? DJ Mr. Groove in the house. What's your age? I would prefer not to share that one. ¿Sabes español? Poquito, you thought to sabe. How long have you been a DJ? 20 years. What is your favorite music genre? You know, I love hip hop, I love funk, I love old school, and I love salsa, and I love my reggaeton. Can you show me a little bit of your reggaeton moves? Uh, lo que pasó, lo que pasó, pasó. Entre tú y yo, lo que pasó, lo que pasó. Oh, that's some pretty awesome reggaeton moves. All right. If you could be an animal, which one would you be? I'll be a tiger. <laughs> Why is that? A tiger's dope. How can you not love a tiger? You're right. Who is the president of Mexico? No sé. I'm not Mexican. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What is 7 plus 12? 19. Yes, he got it. If you could have written any song, which song would it have been? If I could have written any song? Thriller, Michael Jackson. Woo! Show me your dad was for Thriller. Oh, my gosh. The Michael Jackson is a, that's a thriller. <laughs> if you could have been a stripper, what would be your stripper name? Astronaut Alvarez. <laughs> if you could go back in time, what would you do? Uh, I would build a DeLorean. No. <laughs> what would you tell Britney Spears if she was right here? Mommy, come dance. <laughs> Come down on me. Actually, time's up. Time's up. Yes, good yeah, job. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, he had to go. He had to repeat this song. But DJ Mr. Group, thank you so much for being with us. You guys, DJ Mr. Group does get us up. So if you guys want to get his contact information to call him for your next party, your next guest, that whatever you're having, your party celebration, give him a call. His contact info is on the screen. All right, guys, this has been the Beats for I'm Viviana Granillo. Don't go anywhere because we have a whole lot more on HBTV. Bye. Coming up next, we got Lindita, who's going to teach us how to make some summer fun tips. Don't go anywhere. Hola, and welcome to Lindita's Kitchen. I am Lindita, and today I'm going to introduce you to my famous Lindita's instant salsa mixes that you just add tomatoes to. All natural, no preservatives, no sodium, and you just use three medium-sized tomatoes, just like this, you dice it up, you take a package of Linditas, and I'm using the hot because I do like it hot, right? Mm. So we're gonna add it to the tomatoes, and we're gonna mix it. And that's three, like I said, three medium-sized tomatoes. So what you wanna do is just mix it into your tomatoes, and this is also great for other recipes, like your avocado, you can add it to sour cream for different dips. You can add it to your carnitas, fajitas, ay, 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 you know, you, you can use it as a rub on your fish. So Lindita's is also available in your local grocery store. So when you need to look for some, just go to the Mexican spice section. You'll find Lindita's right there. I hope you enjoy as, fa as much as my family and friends. Okay, so now we have our avocado cubed. We have two avocados. We're gonna add the fresh Lindita salsa and I'm using the hot because I do like it hot. So we're gonna add about three tablespoons to six and this is totally preference, okay? But since there's, there's two avocados, I'm gonna add and add three, okay, maybe four because I do like it. And I do like it hot, okay? So we're gonna stir this in, avocado. Mm, if you were here, you could smell the aromas, no? I know you guys can over there. Beautiful. So once you've added your, your salsa, and again, you can add as much as you want. Okay, have fun with it. We're gonna go ahead and add one half lime juice, lemon, so you cut it. And I use it, I do the Mexican thing, you know, we just use that tenador, no? Okay, we're gonna just squeeze it in there like that. That's what my mommy, how she used it, so, you know, runs in the family. It's la cultura, no? Okay, we're gonna mix it up a little bit more. And before your guests come, what you wanna do is you wanna preserve it so it won't turn brown. 
The secret is you're going to add your seeds right into your avocado, just like this. Let's see. Now that your avocado dip is all ready to go, don't forget to remove the seeds when your guests come, okay? And don't go away because I'm going to be making another dip for you to enjoy with your guests. And that includes a little sour cream, eh, on the side. So now we're gonna start with our sour cream dip, okay? So you're gonna use 24 ounces of the sour cream. And I prefer to use the hot, Lindy does, because I'm a hot girl and I love my foods kind of spicy. You can go ahead with the mild as well. So what you wanna do is just add it right into 24 ounces of sour cream. We're gonna mix it up, just like that. And this is great for, we use it for our poker parties. Um, you know, watching football, you know, you're out by the pool. I mean, this is so versatile. You can use it anywhere. It tastes just wonderful. Once you make it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay? So look how easy is that. Mira, así. Esto lo que necesitas hacer. That's all you need to do, right? So, with that, I just want to say, I'm going to taste this. Make sure that it's good enough for you, because it is. Mm. All right. Híjole, está bien delicioso. So now, something to go with your summertime dips. Of course, you need to have a mojito. This is Lendita's famous mojito. I am, this is a home type of recipe, okay? So we're going to get started with this with three uh, limes. And that's about three quarter ounce of lime. So what you want to do is just add it to your glass, just like this. And then we're going to add three to five mint leaves. Okay, and I love mint, so, oh, let me tell you, one do is you wanna muddle it. Get a muddler, you can get it at any store. Let me tell you, muddle down the line, squeeze out the juices, ay, ay, ay. Yi. And then we have the, um, the line, we got the juice, the mint, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and add our syrup to it. Okay, and that is about three quarter ounce Add that in there. And then on your rum, you want to go with the light rum? Okay, I'm going with the straight rum. And I do like mine a little bit stronger, but it's about one, one-fifth ounce. Okay, we kind of fill it to the rim there. Eeks. Orale. Okay, and I'm going to muddle it just a little bit more. Okay. I see. Going to add our ice. And I like mine filled to the top. Now again, if you use a short glass, this recipe will be a little bit stronger, right? And since I'm using a tall, just like this, ay, 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 what you wanna do is top it off with some club soda, fill it to the rim, just like that. And we're gonna just mix it up a little bit. Mira, tan bonito, look how beautiful that is. And go ahead and garnish it with a little bit more mint, just like that. And squeeze a little lime, and put it on the side. Mira, y orale, we are done. Salud, and thank you for joining me. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, coming up next, we got Alex Ramirez with HBTV Sports. This is Alex Ramirez with HBTV Sports, and this is what's trending this week. The Windy City got a little windier on Monday for the Chicago Blackhawks as they captured their third Stanley Cup in six years by defeating the Tampa Bay Lightning 2-0 in Game 6. The Blackhawks clinched their first Stanley Cup at home since April 12, 1938. So if you're doing the math out there, Blackhawks fans, you have hoisted the Lord Stanley six times in your coveted franchise history. Interesting side note. The cup almost did not arrive on time for the post-game festivities as extreme weather and road closures in Chicago caused the coveted trophy to arrive minutes after the Blackhawks clinched their finals win. 
Former Colorado Avalanche head coach Joe Clinville won his third cup since joining the Blackhawks organization. Now, memo to Cronky Sports, you might want to consider bringing him back. Just a thought. Congratulations to the Golden State Warriors who wrapped up their first NBA title since 1975, taking control in the second half and never looking back to beat the Cleveland Cavaliers in Game 6 of the Finals on Tuesday, 105-97. It was a season to remember for the Warriors after leading the NBA with 67 victories in the regular season and Steph Curry took MVP honors. Former NBA champion and current Warriors head coach Steve Kerr was asked after the game his thoughts on the championship and former Denver Nuggets superstar Andre Iguodala scored 25 points and was named Finals MVP. Way to go, Iggy! Moving over to our local NBA team, the Denver Nuggets, on Tuesday named former Sacramento Kings head coach Mike Malone as a new head coach and agreed to a four-year contract. The fourth year of the deal is a team option. Malone made the strongest impression with general manager Tim Conley and president Josh Kroenke in meetings with Denver's management, overtaking interim coach Melvin Hunt to win the job. Tuesday was his first press conference in front of the Denver media, and he had a chance to explain what he plans to bring to the Mile High City. Good luck to coach Mike Malone and the Denver Nuggets. They're going to need it. And finally, the Women's 2000 FIFA World Cup has taken center stage in Canada this past week, and the U.S. women's team advanced to the Sweet 16 after defeating Nigeria 1-0 behind Abby Wambach's goal in the 45th minute. It was Wambach's 14th World Cup goal, pulling her even with Bridget Prince for second on the all-time list, behind Brazil's Marta, who has 15. The United States ranks second in the world behind Germany, has two World Cup titles, but hasn't won since 1999. Four years ago in Germany, the U.S. advanced to the finals but fell short to Japan on penalty kicks. This win sends the United States through as the leader of its group for the sixth time in seven Women's World Cups. The team heads to Edmonton, Alberta for the first match of the knockout stage. The opponent has not been determined. More on the World Cup next week on HPTV Sports. Thank you, Alex. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Cheesemate of the Week. Can I get a drum roll? And the Chief of the Week goes to the undecisive woman, Rachel Dolezal. Do I really need to talk about this? <laughs> Hands down, she gets the Achievement of the Week Award. All right, guys, that has been all for HBTV's weekly report. I'm Viviana Granillo. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We will see you guys next week because we have something very special just for you. All right, guys, have a good one. See you next time.